Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to... Welcome back. God, it's been a long time. It's been a while. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Had to take some time off for Mr. Clay's wedding, honeymoon, extra honeymoon, extra, extra honey, whatever the hell was going on for Something. three weeks. Um, Evan Manship here with Mainstay Property Group. We are here for another episode of Indie Deal Discovery. I'm joined by my ugly half and recently married half, Clay Manship. Yo! We're here to uh, talk to you about uh, a couple different things, but before you see this microphone and uh, this sweet little software that Mr. Nelson put together. Uh, just please, please note, this is not a podcast. In fact, Clay and I can't stand podcasts. We can't stand masterminds. <laughs> we can't stand the abundance mentality. We don't, we don't play the little cutesy fun games that everyone else does, okay? This is strictly a, a show that is intended to bolster your investment uh, capacity, okay? So this is uh, just uh, another feather in the cap, another tool in your war chest to build and sharpen your sword, to be <clears throat> a better investor here. In Indianapolis, um, and talk to the people, Clay. Give them a rundown. It, yeah, it's really easy to understand, guys. We we want you to be better, and and f for lack of better way of putting it, we're not fancy guys. We just want you to understand the ins and outs of how we think. Um, we are far from the best at what we do, uh, but we damn well have done a lot of deals, and we certainly want you to understand uh, how we have done them. So, uh, for those who don't know, Evan and I, we started our business in 2014. Uh, since then, we've wholesaled, flipped, owned rentals. It's getting close to 2,000 yeah. units, um, probably 1,900 or so now. But uh, regardless, we're here to help you out, help you understand how we think through things. And if there's one thing I've learned in real estate, if you ask 10 different people their opinion, you'll get 10 different answers. And so uh, we encourage debate. We encourage you guys to share their, some addresses, some thoughts of what we're talking about. Uh, we'd be happy to underwrite some deals for you guys. It's just something for you guys to take home and uh, try and see how our brains spin and uh, how we think through things. So in an effort to give us uh, one of... Hopefully, 10 opinions you'll get today on the show. 10. Um, again, ask, agree, disagree, challenge, whatever, please. It's super helpful for everyone watching. Um, we're we're, we're going to dive into uh, something that I saw on Facebook today from a friend of mine that posted something along the lines wow. of, hey, uh, I, I listed a house for sale um, this morning, had uh, eight or 10 cash offers in hand, all of which, or most of which were above ask uh, by noon. And we're accepting none of them. In fact, we're going to reject all of them and essentially push reset and go back to the drawing board. And I was sitting there thinking, God, if I'm an real, investor... Real quick, real quick to, to take a step back. Uh -oh. To take a step back, a cash offer for a piece of real estate is exactly like buying a, a T-shirt or something, right? Most offers when it comes to real estate are go through financing, go through a bank, right? They go through some level of, I don't have all the money right now, so I need someone else to lend it to me. Uh, this is someone who listed a property and got 10 offers all of which came from people who had the money in a savings account, right? They had the, they could close the property today if they wanted to, uh, which is unique. It's super cool that it's going on. Great for that seller, but ultra unique. Then go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the the, the breakdown. Uh, essentially, what that's and the reason that's important is in an, any normal market, and I think it's fair to call Indianapolis market right now in any market really, frankly, real yeah, estate as a whole. Indy, yeah. Is abnormal. It's 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 gone bonkers, and no one really knows when it's going to correct itself. We've been saying it for years that, mm -hmm. that this could be the year where we kind of go back to normal, could go back to normal, and it's just gone gangbusters <laughs> for years and years and years. So I've been professionally wrong for like three or four years as far Amen, as brother. where we are in the market cycle. Many of us have, but the reason this is important to back to, to rewind here to my story uh, to get to list a property at, at time point A, and you know four hours after time point. A have a, any cash offer, much less a handful, much less ten that you aren't accepting is is crazy. the abnormal of abnormal, right? Yeah, crazy talk. So crazy that's land. why I'm bringing this up. Is like, wow, if that's the case, and I'm a a, a home buyer, a first time investor, or even a seasoned investor, you know, it's got to get pretty tough uh, uh, looking into these deals and and, and kind of getting bullied around a little bit with like, my God, like how how are these people making this work? What are they doing that I'm not doing? Yeah. What are they saying that I'm not seeing? Are they just rolling the dice, hoping it's going to appreciate and live in San Francisco the rest of their life? It's it, it, it's goofy. So I wanted to address it and and look into this really with a, a comment where uh, a question I get all the time, Luke and I get all the time at Mainstay. What can I be doing differently? How can I be a better client? How can I be a better investor? And uh, we'll we'll dive into that a, a, a little bit. But I'm hoping that that by the time we're done talking here, you can rest assured that you're not missing the boat. You're not missing something. These folks are doing something differently that not many other folks are. 
that is going to them this essentially is making them a better investor. They're getting more swings at the plate. They're getting more deals under the belt, and they're building their balance sheet um, quicker than other folks because they're willing to do things yeah. differently. And guys, by the way, if you like what we're talking about, or frankly, if you don't like what we're talking about, give us a like, give us a share. Please challenge our opinions. Um, there are a lot of people in real estate and beyond that don't want their opinions challenged or to get in some kind of healthy debate. Uh, ask our wives. Ev and I uh, get off to that. So uh, please, we encourage some addresses to come through, some comments to come through, and we'll talk about them. I think the first thing uh, I'll dive into here is um, how, essentially how can one be better look at things differently? Um, options is a huge thing that Clay and I preach yep. in, in, in real estate investing is, you know, don't always go into any deal um, with one, you know, uh, uh, exit strategy in mind. It's a great way to lose a bunch of money quickly. Clay and I's first flip, tell them about it. Well, no, if, real quick, whoever's known me for a while and known my real estate philosophy knows that I, a long time ago an old dude told me that I would never jump into a pool where either there was only one ladder to get out or one way to get out, right? I'd never jump into an investment and only have – you know, swim through all this shit, frankly, uh, just to get out of the pool. I want a pool that's got eight, seven, eight, nine, ten ladders, so I can just make my choice as I get in. Am I enjoying it? Do I need to swim all the way through to get to that really cool ladder? You know, switch the metaphor however you want, but I want options. I want to know as I get in, there are my ten different exit strategies. I know exactly what to do. And what we see a lot of, and what we do, is people that jump into an investment, uh, or they were told by somebody to have a one-track mind that only focus on that one ladder or only jump into a pool that's got one ladder. And I think that's lunacy. I yeah. think that is completely uh, asinine, frankly. So as we're looking through this, we're going to talk today about uh, going back to our first flip. I think you're talking about Lyndon, aren't you? Oh, I was four. referencing Lyndon, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible idea. <laughs> There's, uh, well, it's, it, it's just looking at, at deals to do deals. And that's something we see people do too is that, there's nothing sexy about just doing a deal to say you did one. Um, make sure it's got options. Make sure it's got the right the right prescription to make money. And this deal on 1145 Linden, super sick house, by the way. Um, we did a flip on and lost 40-some-odd thousand dollars um, hmm. because we just jumped into a flip because it only had one exit strategy and we wanted to do a flip. Uh, stupid. Stupid. And it, it was stupid it, tax. It was, it was tuition. We paid a stupid tax and uh, – we're still here today, but the thing we should have done a little bit differently is approach every every deal, especially our first freaking flip. We were 24 at the time, had no clue what we're doing. Nope. Borrowed a hundred some odd thousand dollars in a hard money loan that we couldn't pay off, so we had to take money out of our pockets, pay it off. It's terrible. Anyway, in an effort to uh, demonstrate what not to do, there, have fun with that one. But um, <laughs> something I want to show uh, are a couple of our new first time clients from Seattle uh, closed today on a, a, a little duplex. Um, in oh a, yeah, in an urban core market. Yep, uh, sub market rather. That uh, I think has more options than uh, than the traditional deal does. So I'll load this thing up. Clay, do you want to uh, maybe chat on a little bit about what you know on this thing? Yeah. Well, real quick, I I'm obligated to like this deal because it's like a mile from my house. So um, you certainly are. I, I live in the Heron Morton neighborhood of downtown. If you're unfamiliar with that, tons of literature on our website and talk to any of our, our employees about uh, these downtown urban core neighborhoods. But this is in a neighborhood called Fall Creek Place, and it's uh, 26th and Central. You can see how the picture here looks like a duplex. Um, a, a, again, if you buy a duplex, the chances are, the probability is, that you're using that income to, as a rental for retirement or just for cash generation, right? Most duplexes are not lived in by owner-occupants, right? Some are. Uh, Aaron, our younger brother, uh, owner-occupies a, a duplex. But they're usually investments. They're portfolio assets that shell off cash and provide a steady stream of income for you as the investor. Um, what's getting more and more popular as downtown Indianapolis continues to expand um, is, is the subdivision of these two units into townhomes or condos, right? So uh, the owner of this duplex went through and legally made each side of the duplex its own sellable unit. Right. And that was my question, Clay. Was, was give me the dummy, the dumbed down version of what a subdivision is. For, I'm sorry. For we uh, less sophisticated. Imagine folks, you've right? got a duplex where each side is is equidistant. Right. Here we're gonna draw a fucking diagram on this thing. Welcome to welcome to yeah, 2020, 2020 where you do yeah. this. <laughs> this is subdivision. So you you have a duplex, one big block, and then you got one and two right here. You subdivide right down the middle. Imagine you have a chainsaw and you cut right down the middle of this duplex. It's so having one unit, now you've got two. So our, our, our friends James and Nick, who, who bought this duplex, um, which is really, again, one of the better parts of Indy, uh, near Northside, mm -hmm. lots going on, apartment development, breweries, 
um, ultra high end houses. I mean, hell, where's that? What that house sell for? Uh, just north of you, that one uh, on 19th in Jersey. Oh, a million bucks or just, yeah, just shy? I think, I think it was just shy of a million bucks. So goofy, goofy, goofy values Someone here. from Platt Collective can tell me where that sold for. I think they listed it. So, yeah, Platt, uh, tell us where we're missing the boat here. But, uh, you know, you got a million dollar houses on block one. I'm not a mathematician. I'll get as close to that million dollar house as possible so that appraisers send the value skyrocketing. Okay. Now, you can see right here, here's our duplex or at least one side of it. Um, Nick uh, and... and J and James uh, bought this thing, bo both sides for I think 200 grand, maybe a little bit over 200 grand. Um, what they plan to do here is essentially sell off. Well, let me back up. When I, br when I brought this to James and Nick, they uh, underwrote it like a traditional person would, right? They hopped on the mainstay deal evaluation calculator online on our website. Happy to send it to you. It's on our YouTube channel as well. But blah, blah, blah. They hop in there. They type in their numbers. Great, good, great, grand. And they said, wow, this deal doesn't really work. Um, it's leased uh, all together between the two units, like 2100 bucks, 2200 mm -hmm. bucks. 22, I think. So by the time you buy a house for $200,000 and lease it for 2200 there's not a lot of juice left for you to put in your pocket mm -hmm. when it's all said and done. And we'll underwrite that at a different time. But James and Nick said, hey, it's not really for us. What do you, I mean, I don't think this works. What, what are we missing? I think that's an important distinction here is what am I missing? Having the humility to, to ask that question, you know, right. what am I missing? What, what am I not seeing That's here? And I remember sitting at Kilroy's with these guys a couple of Fridays ago talking about this deal. What am I missing? And, uh, and so I, actually, they actually came to you and said, hey, based on what I know, it's not working. What is there something I'm missing based on what you know? James and Nick approached me and said, I, I, Luke and I, and said, you know, we want to buy some multifamily product here in Indy. Mm -hmm. We want to get started in a neighborhood that's tried and true. We understand. We'll pay a little bit more for it sure. to make sure it's safe. But we want to buy a – we're not scared of flips. We live in Seattle, for Christ's sake. But, you know, <laughs> we, we, we want something more high-end, and we'll pay a little bit more for it. So even when they're paying a little bit more for it, they still couldn't get the numbers to make sense. Interesting. And uh, – which was interesting, yeah. So he said, you know, again, the, hum the, the, the humbling question here was, you know, what am I missing? What did you see when you sent this to me? Because obviously you're not just sending me trash at properties mm -hmm. that, that don't make sense. And I said, right. well, I'm super glad, James, super glad that you asked. Um <clears throat> And uh, for the viewers at home, I'll show you exactly what, in my opinion, these folks uh, were missing or hadn't really considered. And maybe that's something, well, Ev loads this up, that's something I like to bring up to folks who uh, either just getting started or, frankly, on their first couple. Uh, because the first couple have a way of humbling you. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Yes. Um, a lot of people will watch, you know, your YouTubes and their mentors, and they'll put these guardrails on your investment strategy that really limit, certainly in a, in a competitive environment like today will limit your availability or your uh, your ability to, to to pivot, to move into something and, and evaluate things a different way. It, so much so that when you evaluate a deal, it's a hard no. They stamp it, they sign off on it, no, I don't want this house. Um, I would encourage your friends, your investment friends, your gurus that don't have money, and your other people that are giving you bad advice to, to challenge why that's the case. Um, take a look at it two, three times. Ask two, three different opinions. Get multiple opinions, right? Um, for better or for worse, I think that gives you multiple people looking at a deal, which is always a good thing. So, uh, and Clay's right, you know, getting two or three strategies. And again, we're we're greasy wholesalers, right? You know, <laughs> feel free to not trust anything we say, but there are a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people that really trust and understand where we're coming from on some of this, these items. So James and Nick were, were able to sit down and uh, over a couple of liftoff IPAs talk about kind of what, huge was, going, what was going on. Yeah, huge fan. So, Shout uh, out Liftoff. So <clears throat> this is what I showed them, and I'll show you guys the same thing. Um, so, again, here, just to be clear here, here's our duplex where the red dot is. This is the subject property. 2605 Central is the subject address. Uh, here it is. And you can see uh, the reason this is important is you can see 2605, 2607 uh, Central. They're two different parcels legally. So much like the the condos over here, townhomes over here, whatever they are. So they legally got a chainsaw and cut it right down the middle. Right. So this duplex you're looking at here, beep, got chopped in half to where we have one essentially one piece of real estate, second piece of real estate. Okay. So what I did is say, you know, you shouldn't underwrite this as a duplex. Let's underwrite this as two townhomes, side by side, as if you were to sell these things and just see to see what you know an appraiser or a disinterested you know buyer whatever might might look at them looking for. So again, each unit's le le leased at like a thousand bucks, eleven hundred bucks, or something. And again, without really trying, you just go another block south here, and you can click on this one. You know, hey, this looks like a comp, right? 
this is a probably a better, probably a, a superior comp in my my estimation here, just because it's more recent. It looks like it's more re more recently built. But at the end of the day, this is a two bedroom. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, two yeah, bed two bedroom, two and a half bath, uh, townhome. Exactly like what James and Nick just bought. Okay, so uh, and this sold and for don't come chirping me, telling me it was built in two thousand three. Clearly, we know that, right? Yeah, it's right, a, right. It's not right. a perfect comp. It's got a garage. It's got a little bit more sex appeal to it. But regardless, right? Discount this a little bit. And you're still moons over where you would normally be evaluating this as a duplex. Right. So Nick and James, but let's just say this thing's worth what 150. Let's just say let's let's just say our side, our duplex subject subject townhome <coughs> is a duplex. For Clay's terminology here, this side of the chainsaw is worth 150, which would suggest that the other side of this chainsaw is worth 150. Okay. So altogether, our guys are worth 300 grand between the two duplexes. The two units, right. The between two the units. two units, and they're in for, uh, again, $200,000-ish. As it's sat, they don't need to touch it. Okay? So, hey, once that's the case, well, yeah, you know, it might not cash flow like crazy, but, boy, you can lever, you can borrow against it like like wild, and all of a sudden you're incredibly liquid, and once you're liquid, you can start making other investment decisions. Or sell one side, lease the other. Sell one side, sell the other. Um, your options are, are endless with this thing. So as soon as I kind of open their eyes to, man, you can really make this this happen, and it's a lot different than just buying a house and only renting it, or buying a house and only flipping it. It takes a little bit of like the real estate two hundred one to to escape from the brain dead, uh, you know, the, the 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 only do X in real estate. It's just, uh, opportunity in real estate is seeing what other people can't, and whether you have good advisors on your team or just you're you know you're pretty damn good at it. Uh, that's why I want multiple opinions. When you're buying any investment, any piece of real estate, always seek multiple opinions, whether it's a greasy wholesaler like myself or a realtor or a for sale by owner, it makes no difference. So again, I don't want to keep wasting everyone's time here boring with this, but the subject property again was a three, one and a half, uh, 1,600 square feet, built back and whenever, but it was recently rehabbed. So again, I mean, I'm no mathematician on the market for a couple of months, sold above ask. Uh, this is two bed, one and a half, uh, 1,200 square feet, okay? So this is where this is where we where we came up with this valuation. We're like, yeah. wow, this might actually make you know a little bit of sense here. So uh, checks out, and uh, James and Nick are jacked up about that acquisition. And it should be. So Good it's strictly them. just because they kind of opened their eyes and were humbled themselves a little bit. Where where are we where are we missing this that we think we can go through and start making some money? Yeah. And uh, and, and they'll make plenty of it. In my estimation. Mazel here. tov. Congrats to James and Nick. Do you know walk the folks through uh, that other one we were talking about? Christ, I've forgotten the address already. We can do Kessler if you want. That was a free Money Friday deal last. I'm, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Well, that's a good one too. Ryan, how are we doing on comments? But did Ryan quit? I think Ryan's asleep back there. Should I throw something? Uh, on? We do have one comment. Uh, we got a gentleman asking. Uh, uh, you were talking about how you saw a uh, a post earlier today about a bunch of deals, um, or uh, a bunch of offers on on one deal that uh, somebody wasn't accepting. Um, how often do you see that? And like in this specific case, if you know the reasoning behind it, you kind of didn't go into that specifically. But he was wondering why uh, um, that was the case. This is from uh, Cameron. Cool. Yeah, good. That, that's an awesome question. And and I'm I'm not a retail broker. Oh, I, I take that back. I am a retail broker. I'm a licensed real estate agent. I'm a licensed CCIM. Got a little letters and stuff next to my name. I'm not retail enough to know. Hell, you know this. I'm not retail enough yeah. to know kind of why this happens, how it happens, or what the legalities are behind it. Um, my thought process is this person recognized pretty quickly that they undervalued it and that they didn't want to just take the, one of the first 10 offers that came in. They kind of wanted to see what was going on out there, kind of put their dip their toe in the market and figure it out after the fact. That's. I, <laughs> I always compare real estate to a girl at a bar. And uh, if a girl at a bar walks in and is immediately swarmed by 10, 15 guys like most are, right, they're going to realize that they have a lot more options than they first realized, right? So they're going to sit around and maybe wait on the right guy to come along, buy him a drink, and, and the rest is history. Now, that's my understanding, too, is that their broker probably realized that, and a broker is just someone who helps you professionally, right? They're paid to help you. And so I'm also a licensed broker, and I, I tell people all the time that if, if that was the case, if you under if it's on the market, right, you get 10 offers, you have every right to not accept any of them, mm -hmm. right? And uh, now you have to show them to your client. But that's likely what happens. They showed them all 10 offers and said, look, I think if we up the price here and then don't accept any of these, we're probably going to pull more money. And I, it would shock me if that didn't happen. Yeah, I, I, and I'm sure the broker is going to be frustrated <laughs> for listing a property for X and seller deciding. <laughs> but that's to walk. a lot of that's that, the market that's, too. Yeah, that's for them, and that's the market. Yeah. That's the legal side that we're not getting into. But um, uh, frankly, I, 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 I see it getting 
you know, if you get a lot of attention like that, you got you got you got a cool ass property, plain and simple. Um, cool ass property. Speaking of trademark that. Speaking of a uh, uh, cool ass properties, the one Clay was referencing. Um, That's what I'm looking up now. What are you looking up? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know which one you're talking about. Oh, I was, I was, I was going to pull up Kessler. Oh, that's fine. That is a cool-ass property. Yeah, I told you. Cool-ass approved. Um, you see the word Kessler, by the way, is a pretty big street. It's a cool area. I mean, I- anywhere on Kessler is, 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 a, is a pretty cool little spot in Indianapolis. And uh, uh, what I was pulling up is a, a big limestone ranch. It was built in the 50s, uh, which I like. Shout-out to Dan and Kelly Perez, Brick Shit House. This one's a limestone shit house, I guess. Um but it's a cool ranch nonetheless. It's a 1950s post-war b- constructed house that sits in a cool area. And yeah, let me zoom out. So for for Evan and I, you, you know, guys work with Mainstay, you work with us as clients. Uh, we do some flips here and there, uh, but there are a lot more people who are a lot more, uh, you know, flip oriented, if you will, than we are. They're, they're infinity. There are people that are infinity smarter <laughs> when it comes to flipping, designing, <laughs> brokering houses like this than. Than we are. I don't think that's a that's something. And, and so mystery. what I like to do is is uh, if, if I'm going to flip a house or flip a house on behalf of a client like we do for some of you guys, um, I want to make sure it's a it's it's a brain it's you know it's almost foolproof. No such thing as foolproof. Disclaimer this. Disclaimer. And Nelly put the disclaimer up. Moral of the story is this: I, I want it to be as easy to understand as possible. And if I can explain this investment to an eight year old, then you probably should not be doing it. And you know, from a flip standpoint. Now you're talking rentals, it's a little bit easier with the townhomes and this, that, and the other thing. Yep. Now, with Kessler, I'm going to let Ev talk about it, but this is about as brain dead as it gets. This is easy to understand and uh, just a quick transaction. Yeah, there's there's, there's not one This was on our Free Money Friday. If you guys are not tuning in, Free Money Fridays every Friday at 3.30 p.m. on Wednesday's channel. Um, I'm usually the one obnoxious who's sharing it. Uh, this one was on Free Money Friday last week, this past yeah, week, this right? Past Friday, a couple and of, sold yeah, a couple Friday. hours. So if you guys are looking for the freshest off market, discounted real estate assets in Indianapolis, please check out Free Money Friday. Those deals usually sell same day. I uh, would love to get you guys hooked up if you're in the market. And there's Clay with the shameless plug. Thank there you, you Clay. Um, this, w- I guess the, the reason I, w- I wanted to talk about this one is is three years ago, four years ago, this this would not be something that is exclusively being approached uh, as, a, as a redevelopment type project. Okay, The, the buyer on this deal... Uh, he's buying it for 150 grand. I think he's going to put, you know, 40, 50, maybe 60 into it, and going to turn around and sell the thing for close to 300. Okay, so he's got a lot of spread put on that deal. But the reason he's doing it is because of our good old friend here, the market cycle. And you can see here on my my MLS uh, access, you're peeking here. Active is checked, so it'll pop up anything here that's active, and uh, meaning it's available for sale right now. It'd normally be a green little house here, a green little box. And if there's something available, I'm trying to try and pull it out until we see something that's green. Jesus. Um, hey, there's something. So for those of you that weren't uh, stellar <laughs> in economics class, um, when there's not something that's readily available for sale, when supply is very low, uh, that means price is very high. Supply goes down, price goes up. So uh, that's exactly what's happening in this little area. In fact, you can barely see one little piece of property here <laughs> that's available that? for 1.5 mi- This is probably one of those little castle-looking things or Click something. Look at that. That is sweet. Oh, this is dope. Let's talk about this house. Okay, so this is the only house available <laughs> within like an hour or an hour, a mile now, drive of the – And now keep it in mind. So when, 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 when supply is low and demand is high, that makes prices go up, right? So demand is clearly high based on the market cycle we're in. And the only thing that the market is supplying at the moment is this $1.5 million castle, right? Um, for those of you California <laughs> guys, there's not a whole lot of $1.5 million houses in the city. No. Right? No, that's a lot of money here. So so reversing Gosh. this a little bit, when when our client knows that they have the they will have here in a couple months the only property available for sale, the only supply based on the MLS, um, that will make price go up, uh, which is exciting for them. And there's a lot of neighborhoods in Indianapolis just like this. Man, there's literally nothing. I, I can't even make something come up here if I tried. Are you at a mile yet? Not, not quite. This is perplexing. I've never seen this before in my life. There's one. Here's another one up here. Okay, so there are two properties. Make sure you search this, right? Are you on condos I'm or telling you. Like that? I'm telling you. Nothing else. Huh. I'm telling you. See, Clay's, Clay's thinks my, my search parameters are off here, and they're absolutely That's not. wild. Either way, so there's, the reason that I, I'm mentioning this, we're getting out, we're, this is off the rails. Three years ago, one could have approached this as a rental or likely a flip. Right. You know, but a flip would have been a little bit more risky at the time because there may have been a lot more inventory available. Supply would have been high, higher, and therefore the price would have been kind of hovering uh, at a more steady pace. 
Um, but t- today's market cycle makes it super easy for an investor to approach us and say, cool, I want to flip it. And what this investor did, how he differentiated himself, how he approached it differently than maybe someone else would, is he came to us and he's like, cool, I'm going to take it, take down the property with you guys. I trust you guys to do the financing on the project through mm-hmm. your in-house capital uh, placement. And I trust you guys to do the rehab on the thing, which we're still figuring out. So this guy came to me and said, cool, I want to buy it. He signed a purchase agreement. He put down his earnest money deposit, and the deal is his. We're taking care of the rest. So uh, cool, cool deal. Um, different in the fact where he's not necessarily approaching this as, you know, it could be a rental or a flip like the duplex, kind of going two or three different directions here. He's saying, here it is, but I'm approaching it like a, uh, a rock solid. I'm putting all my chips on flip, but I know for a fact I'm going to put it on, an, on, on a flip where you guys can handle everything start to finish, yeah. and that's the bet I'm, I'm, I'm taking. So uh, different way to differentiate yourself. It's like a derivative or something. It's a different of the different. But um, obviously a really, really neat way to make that happen here in a really, really cool neighborhood. Yeah, and, and, and taking a quick peek at this as you zoom in on the – go to the, uh, the comps there. Uh, again, oh, I should note here before I get carried away. This – Kessler Boulevard is the weirdest street in the city. Um, Kessler uh, – where does it even start? Got over like near Emerson, I guess? I really don't know. That's a good question. Kessler goes as far east, I think, as Emerson, then comes down – and is essentially follows along 56th Street, then juts down south toward uh, Marion University around, like, that golf course. Where the hell that golf course is? Um, anyway, uh, so I try and type in West Kessler Boulevard North Drive, West Kessler Boulevard West Drive. It gets out of control. The, the system wants to blow up. So I typed in a different address, 3030 West 42nd Street. The actual house here is this one, okay? So here's our house. And so as you guys can kind of see, what I like pointing out, and, and certainly on busy roads, right, um, a lot of people fall into the trap of uh, a common one here in the inner, in the urban core is, is Rural Street, right? If you find a comp that's for sale on Rural Street, uh, you're going to find comps to the west on Temple and on Eastern and on Tecumseh and a lot of great streets over there, yep. right? Yep. Just west of Rural. Um, they're not busy streets. They're not huge thoroughfare corridors up and down the city. They're little side uh, urban streets. On Rural, things are worth historically less money. It's a busy street, yep. right? So I always want to find, if I can, if I'm selling something on a busy street, that's fine. Um, still a lot of value to be had there. But I want to find a comp that's on the busy street. Of course. Right? And so what's kind of cool to me about this 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 deal in particular is that's something for you guys to take home. If you're buying something on Emerson or Sherman or Rule or Kessler. 16th Street, if, College, yeah, goes on and on. That's fine. But find yourself a good comp that's on that street. And what caught my attention about this property is, I guess, just south of it and one house west Again, here's um, the subject right here for you, y'all at so home. Whatever, two houses south, I guess. It's on the same street, right? So um, if you click on that bad boy, right, we're going to take a quick peek at this guy. So this house sold. The first thing I'm going to show you guys is it sold above ask. And you guys can see up there at the top right there. It sold for $202,000. It was listed for two hundred. Okay? So someone bid above what they were asking, and this sold in three days, uh, which is indicative, again, of a lack of supply and a huge demand, in fact, so much demand that they're willing to pay more than what the seller wanted for the property, yep. right? So that's number one. This thing Which is, is, would, I, would you say that's uncommon for, for Indy? Maybe not in today's market cycle, but overall. Over, holistically, yeah. I mean, and I, I think that's a big part. I mean, I think the average property, I just saw the MyBoar stats. I think it's like 29 days, 30 days, the average property today that's still, crazy. right? And so this sold in three days. So as we click on this property and we look through the pictures, it's updated. It's nice-ish but it's not top tier rehab quality. And so what our clients are going through is they're gonna go and make this house nicer, or the subject nicer than this property here. Um, So this, 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 yeah, it's all right. Oh, what the hell That's what I'm saying. It's like like a very, like, and go keep going. It's got like wood paneling in the bedrooms and stuff. It's just not like this, I see what you're you're saying. So it's not perfect, okay? It's not our level of rehab quality. We call ARV, after repaired value. so we're going to go through and make this property nicer, okay? A big takeaway for you guys, I want you guys to understand, I've clicked that X. We're going to go through and we're going to do what's called a per square foot analysis, okay? And this house sold for $202,500. And Ev is so kind as to load it up on his computer. And we're going to divide that pr- price by the amount of square footage this property has. And we're going to get this each square foot. Sold for $105,000. I'm sorry, $105. So each, each square foot sold for $105, okay? Just what all the investors wanted to see is Clay describe what a square yeah, foot square is. Foot. On. Just, <laughs> just put that on the wall of shame, Nelly. Um, here we go. This is, I mean, here's where the, it says it. Plain and simple, right? 
Yeah, so so in West we're getting the 1914 square foot. So if this area, this neighborhood, in fact, on the same street, sells for $105 a square foot, we can pretty much bet that if we multiply that same number by the amount of square feet our subject house has, we can estimate that it will sell for approximately the same amount if our house looks the same as that. Same finish level, same area. So all we really need to know if that's the case is what, how essentially get the finishes to be the same and then mm -hmm. how big's our house? Yeah, that's it. Well, I'm going to hop on here and watch it not work. Uh, yeah, you got it. That should be it. Check that out. Cool. So here's our house. And again, we're just going to go through and let's see how many square feet this has per tax record. And this is exactly the same source which where this information is pulled. So again, this one's uh, rehabbed nicely. Um, it's all right. Yeah. It's okay. 1,900 square feet. No basement. Three bedrooms. Two baths. And uh, just because I, I remember doing Free Money Friday now, this one's a four bedroom, if I'm not mistaken, and four four full bathrooms. I think it's a three bedroom, three bath above oh, sorry, grade, three, three. and a one bedroom, one bath below. That's right. Okay, that, that, that's, that's so. And you're stealing my thunder here, but let's take a look. No, at go this. Ahead. Let's take a look. <laughs> no, no, go to this. So show the people where you find the square footage. Okay. Um, and so I always look up here, guys, up here at the, the, the top left corner of the second page. You'll see base area, but we don't care about base area. We care about finish area. So finish area right here. You have 2,300 square feet finished as it sits. And then you got a 1,700 square foot unfinished basement. But because I've looked at the pictures, I know it's quasi finished. Very likely could be considered finished. When we're sure. done rehabbing it, it will be finished. Right. 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 And so you're looking at this, and we've got 2,366 square feet. I didn't okay. find anything on the web. Series looking for square feet. So, um, so we're going to multiply that times 105. Hang on. We're, we're going to include this finished basement square footage, right? I wasn't. No, just go just do 2,366 20, times 105. Okay. So based on it, if our house was exclusively, and it was 105 and some change, right? So if our house exclusively didn't have a basement at all, it does. We would, and it was only at that finish level, which we're going to make it look nicer, right? We already agreed on that. We're looking at a sale price of roughly $250,000, okay? Based on our subject property. Now, I know we're going to rehab a little bit nicer, right? So we can up that a little bit, right? Maybe 10%? I don't know. You know, maybe just see how what we can get away with in this market cycle. But the biggest value driver that ours has, that our good comp doesn't, is a basement, and not only a, 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 a little you know a little rat crawl hole, space. Yeah. It's a it's a damn damn near full finished basement, and so the real value driver is going to be in the in the in the basement side of things. You know, when you're when you're buying these properties, think about it through your lens, right? If if you're buying a property with Emily, right, you're buying a new property, yep. and you, you know it doesn't have a basement. Great, where are you storing stuff, right? Where are you putting the Christmas decorations? The, the attic's only so big, My you know. God, Christmas decorations. Um, so, so p new home buyers certainly in this price point think about that stuff. They want to be able to go downstairs or, or have storage or have a place for put mechanicals, and so a big value driver certainly in this price range is going to be a, a basement. Well, and you know the point of the, of the the episode here is how can you be how can you add you know different tools to your war chest to make yourself a better investor. Um, Finishing out a basement and not approaching the finished living square footage is all you can really do. But you know, let's say this this that basement's gonna add another you know forty thousand dollars in value. You know, man, if you can sell if you can sell a thing for two ninety and be all in for sub two hundred, who wouldn't do that deal, right? Probably clearing seventy seventy five thousand yeah, dollars. You're gonna clear you know, sixty seventy thousand. Yeah, less than that. So either way, you know that's that's the differentiator here. We're gonna go through. We're gonna finish out the basement, mm -hmm. and that's where our client's gonna see the the cherry on top of yeah. the of the deal, if you will. But um, but again, if, if you're not if you're not if you're not been taught or you're, not, you're only looking at above grade square footage or you're not really paying attention to what truly drives value, um, you could miss that, right? And that's a seventy thousand dollar miss right there if you're flipping houses. And meanwhile, someone else right next door in Seattle or wherever is going to say, "Hell yeah, I'll do the deal. I'll get it because I got guys on my side that can explain that to me sure, and understand yeah. how it all works." So, a different way to be a better investor is to fully understand the square footage uh, makeup metrics and yep. resale price of all that's going. Solid brokers know that. Um, obviously, we're capable of understanding that information. So be sure to uh, chew on this, digest it, and, and bug the crap out of your wholesaler, broker mm -hmm. connections so that they can recommend things like this to you. Ryan Nelson, are you falling asleep in the uh, production booth? You learning a lot about real estate today? Yes, I am. <laughs> any other comments, any questions, anything else we can answer for the fine people of Facebook.com? Uh, let me check as of right now. I don't think so, no. Cool. Um, and, and again, guys, what I'd encourage you guys to do, if you guys are not unfamiliar with our group, um, info at mainstayproperty.com is going to give us a direct line to you guys on our disposition staff. 
talking in depth about the details we've discussed today. So if you're a little unclear about what we're talking about or just learning to or wanting to learn a little bit more about real estate, reach out to us. Uh, it's what we're passionate about. We'd love to talk to you. I'm just going to load up pictures of this Kessler thing because I like looking at it. And make sure people know we're not full of full of crap here. But just look at all those bricks in the front. Boring little ranch, man. This is a yeah. This is the manship special. Is that a volleyball court? Excuse me. I didn't think so until I saw the cooler. Now I think it's a dead giveaway that it's, that's 100 percent a volleyball court and perhaps a bocce ball court. That's pretty slick. Perhaps a um, ra- uh, not a racquetball. What's the one where you get the hoop and you hit it through the hoop? Croquet. It's not croquet. Don't do that in the fucking sand. Crazy. Either way, there's some so some level of uh, there's an amenity here besides the basement. It goes on and on and on. So neat house. Um, stay posted. I mean, a- Aaron's excited for the rehab on that one. I'm so, excited to see where it goes. Yeah, uh, uh, we'll, we'll keep you all posted on that stuff. What else, Clay? What else are we missing? I feel I'm like, good, I man. feel like it's been three weeks, so we got to vomit as much information <laughs> on these folks as possible here. Uh, what I always encourage everyone to do is, is if you have a deal that you're you're having second thoughts on or think you've gotten a couple no's and you're looking for see if there's something else missing, we don't care if it's our deal or not, MLS or not. We want to help you guys and be a resource to you that uh, truly provides value um, and, and really pushes you to become a better version of your investing self. Uh, and much like we encourage you know, discourse and uh, uh, disagreements on – the way we come about things, this is this is supposed to, this is serving to do exactly that on on the approaching half. So we we want to see discourse uh, communication so that every, this can essentially you know build everybody up and to make everyone a better investor here in the city. So we all do things the right way and make the most money possible. So comments, questions, concerns, uh, lunch date, breakfast date, beer date, beer coffee date, date um, come over to the office and hang out for a while. Date, buzz me, Evan at mainstayproperty.com. This is Clay. That's Ryan. Talk to you all soon. I promise it won't be this long next time. Catch your next Indie Deal (laughs) Discovery on uh, not this coming Monday, but the Monday after, the 19th. And we'll catch you all then. Enjoy Monday.